Jewel Capel's life history. This the obsequious of a jewel. I lived life my way. In 1968, the Washington Post declared it the year America unraveled. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Senator Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. And Jewel Lynn Cables was born. She was born on June 12, 1968, to Gerald Dickerson and Eula Cables in Chicago, Illinois. She was preceded in death by her grandparents, Robert and Eunice Dickerson, and Betty B. and Thelma Cables. Jewel was a lively and adventurous child. If anything could be gotten into, she got into it. From the time she could walk, she could shake up a room. From the time she could talk, she could sing. Jewel wasn't born into a Christian home, so she cut her teeth listening to the Supremes, Ray Charles, The Temptations, Smokey Robinson, and her dad, Gerald Dickerson. At the age of five, Jewel's mom received Christ and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So now, her life was filled with Shirley Caesar, the mighty clouds of joy, Mahalia Jackson, and Aretha Franklin singing at New Bethel Church. Jewel was the lead singer in the choir at Free Holiness Church of Chicago. When her mom obeyed an evangelistic call, Jewel was singing on the corner of 63rd and Ashland Avenue. Sadly, her dad didn't embrace the new lifestyle, so he and her mom divorced. In 1978, Jewel's family moved to Los Angeles, California, where her maternal grandmother had relocated. Jewel's family joined her. Jewel continued to sing and pass out Come to Jesus tracks with her mom and other siblings. She attended several elementary schools as her mom sought to live in a safe neighborhood. In the fifth grade, her teacher, Mrs. Sawyer, sent a note home saying, one day I may have to pay hundreds of dollars to hear Jewel sing, but for now, could you please convince her to stop bursting out singing in class? Every morning, our home woke to Jewel City. She sang in the school choir. She sang in churches. And in 1988, she began to sing in recording studios. Jewel gained notoriety as an artist with Death Row Records under the stage name Jewel. So, as the Washington Post had declared, 1968 as the year America unraveled, Jewel's life began to unravel. Amid juggling a private life of family, Christian values, and a need to make a mark in secular entertainment, Jewel's health began to decline. Jewel's job relocated her to Boise, Idaho. There, she and her two sons became members of Capitol Church under Pastor Mark Thornton. In 2016, Jewel was diagnosed with an intestinal lung disease. Her life expectancy was less than four years. She set a course to spend more time with her sons, her grandmother, her siblings, and her mom as she could. When 2021 came, she and her family celebrated. We started making plans for my birthday for the next year. Unfortunately, in the first week of February, she was rushed to the hospital. She was diagnosed with double pneumonia and fluid built up in her lungs. A couple of weeks later, a valve on the right side of her heart began to fail. Surgeons inserted a stent and wanted to sky lift her to Utah Hospital. She refused, saying, I have a 17-year-old son, and I can't leave him. I will set my affairs in order. The surgeon said they needed to give her an infusion of medication that cost $29,886. The insurance company denied it. Her mom rallied over 200 Christians, believe Christian believers, and they prayed. The next day, Jewel was infused. Glory! Jewel went home. On February 7th, 2022, 
She was working on a podcast to start a project called Words of Wisdom from Mama G. It would feature short messages of inspiration. She said to me, her mom on the phone, you have insight that will be helpful to many others. She laughed and I laughed saying, from your mouth to God's ear, we laughed together. She and Mama, she said, Mama, pray on it. You can reach millions of people without leaving your house. Many are called, you are chosen. You have a gift when you speak. People listen. On May 2nd, Jewel was rushed to the emergency room. Her kidneys were failing. Her heart was working desperately to pump enough blood to them, but fluid continued to build up and her kidneys were overwhelmed. On May 3rd, Jewel texts her mom that her oxygen level kept falling. Doctors were running many tests. She, could, she told them, I cannot die, period, because I have things to do. On May 5th, Jewel called her mom and said, Mom, I'm tired. All my debts are paid. They kissed each other and said goodnight. Around 4.30 a.m. the next morning, a bell rang. Jewel left this earthly tabernacle for an eternal state of rest. A publicist once wrote, Jewel's voice is a, as unique and classy as a black diamond, as smooth as a black pearl. In the often rough-edged world of urban contemporary music, Jewel sparks with rare vocal sophistication. She is the death row family jewel. Jewel's memory will linger in the hearts of many. Her mom, Lula Gutierrez, sons, Joel, Jackie Capos, Jamel, Peyton, Jawan, Curtis, grandchildren, Jalen, Joel Jr., and Jackson Capos, three sisters, Deanna Capos, Leslie Dickerson, and Asia Massey, and one brother, Gerald Dickerson. A bonus mother, Margaret Crawford Fitz, and a bonus sister, Brandy Walker. A host of uncles, aunts, cousins, and nieces. A host of church family, friends, and business associates. P.S. Jewel Dickerson, Gerald Dickerson Sr., Christine, Will Payton, and Sean Campbell. God bless everyone. Sis Gutierrez adds, if you didn't hear or see your, your transcript that you sent, or words of reflections, it's because they didn't arrive in time to be included. God bless you. And thank you so much for all the love and concern you've extended to this family.